Right, what are you going to need for this training program, or this strength conditioning program, if you like, is resistance bands and a medicine ball. So what we're looking at is employing task-specific strength that is required for five to 10 seconds of an all-out terror. So you're employing that ATP anaerobic all our energy and primarily that comes from speed strength and speed strength is your ability to recruit the maximum amount of muscle fiber that you have for an explosive movement in this case continuous attacks barrage of punches or some kind of assault through the target but as soon as you go you accelerate and you keep going until it's done if you are training in a street context that will be 10 seconds all out if you are training in the context of a, a combat sport or um, anything where there is a duration of time then you will use a combination of all that explosive effort with power endurance so let's say in the example of bare knuckle fighting there's only one round until someone loses until someone gets knocked out that can happen in the first five seconds or it could take five to ten minutes in which case you're going to need enduring energy and ability to conserve power endurance in the time where you're most inactive but ideally the type of strength that you want to immediately recruit if you've hit somebody and you've hurt them that immediate moment where you capitalize and just explode through them that would be the employment of speed strength so speed strength has two components starting strength and explosive strength Starting strength switches the fibers on, explosive strength keeps them firing. So use the analogy of a light bulb. If you did, let's say, 10 reps in a band push, as I'm gonna show you. 10 reps with a band that was, you were just capable of doing it for 10 reps. Then you would be employing starting strength to start with. With every single repetition, you would be switching on and pumping blood to the fibers and cutting the neuromuscular pathway to get them firing. This is conducive to an energy saving light bulb. You switch it on, it's dim over a period of seconds. As the power accumulates, it eventually goes by six minutes again. That's the same with 10 repetitions. One is easy, two is easy, three is starting to get blood there now, four. Five, starting to warm up. Six, seven, starting to get hard. But you're switching on the starting strength fibers. You're gradually recruiting more and more and more and more over the period of 10 repetitions. This is the energy saving light bulb. As soon as you've recruited the maximum amount of fibers, when lactic acid would build up and fatigue would set in, it's here you're going to apply a metric exercise, which will keep them exploding further. So explosive fibers, analogy with the light, would be a stadium light. Switch on a football stadium light and it's boom, immediate. As bright as it's gonna go. That's how you use explosive strength. So the idea of switching on the starting fibers first and then keeping them firing with ex uh, plyometric explosive exercise after recruits the maximum amount of muscle fiber capacity that you have in a speed strength sense. So that translates to having the ability to recruit maximum fiber from zero to 10 from cold. So if you were to find yourself in an altercation in the street where you were spontaneous and all of a sudden you had to fight and you didn't train in this way, you'd probably recruit between 30 and 60% of your immediate muscle fiber capacity. Adrenaline would create an effect that would be derogatory for that. Whereas if you train regularly to recruit the maximum amount of muscle fibers that you've got to keep them exploding, then you're cutting a different neuromuscular pathway which you download into the motor memory. So now if you were caught by cold in a spontaneous situation, your previous 60% muscle fiber recruitment capacity will turn into 90%. So this is how we cultivate speed strength. Now for this workout, you need a bag borer, steel, or buy some resistance bands. Now you can get flat bands, which are flat and in a continuous loop, or you can get tubular bands, which are either in a continuous loop or separate with handles. Either will work. Right. So you want a variety of bands. If you've got a bunch of smaller bands, 
then you can accumulate them in strength. But ideally, you want the thickest one that you can find, followed by the next, followed by the next, followed by the next, followed by the next, right? So they ascend down in order. And you can buy sets of bands in a variety of places, so have a look. But you need resistance bands. Resistance bands are brilliant for cultivating speed strength and, and using them for a plyometric effect. Plus, you don't take a lot of room to use them. You can pack them in your bag and use them anywhere on the road. They're great. The only additional thing that I would say that would be useful for you to employ would be a medicine ball. And ideally, one of those ones that you can slam into a wall or into a floor, rather than it bounces back to 10, 100 miles an hour and hits you in the fucking head. So this one's just a simple five kilo ball. Another type of ball that you might employ might be um, a slam ball by design, a big slam balls. But a medicine ball and um, resistance bands is what you're going to need. You're also going to incorporate body weight calisthenic exercises. Right, so what you're going to work is you're going to work over several movement planes. You're going to work a push on a horizontal and a vertical plane. You're going to work a pull on a upward vertical plane and a parallel horizontal plane. So horizontal and vertical lines, pulling this way, pulling this way, pulling this way. And on a push line, pushing horizontal and pushing vertically above your head. You're also going to work a hinge dynamic, which is a hinge from the hip. So a deadlift kind of motion, high pull kind of motion, kettlebell swing kind of motion hinge and you'll also work a squat so the planes of movement are a squat a hinge push and pull all, right? all dynamic activity takes place over those planes of movement be it sport or violence okay we are going to incorporate uh, a structure of training that i'm going to block in block for you so it's going to be a which will have a sequence a will have three exercises followed by b which will have three to four exercises you will work each exercise for a desired number of reps, followed by the next, followed by the next, followed by the next in your sequence. So you'll work them in circuit fashion consecutively. So example. So to start, we're gonna work a hinge movement. And the hinge movement's gonna be a deadlift. What we're gonna do is explode up to the top. And then you're gonna slowly descend to halfway hold isometrically and then you're going to return to the ground and then you're going to explode back up slowly isometrically pause at halfway point and then slowly to the ground you'll probably use the thickest band that you're capable of using right? your repetition range is going to be five reps for this exercise right? what you're going to do is take this band and stand on it in the middle like so so that you've got a handle just below your knees, either side and a point of tension. Here you're taking that get set position where your back is flat and parallel as if you're gonna pull a deadlift. Do not round your back, keep your head up. From this position, all you're gonna do is plyometrically explode to the top. And at the top of the motion, you're just gonna add a shrug. So you hold, one, two, three, four, five, and then a five second negative. Now, boom, and then again, shrug, pull, shoulders down, down one, two, three, four, five second negative. So the sideways here, shoulder pull, shrug in the shoulders, hold at the top for five, five, four, three, two, one, you're going to be five reps, okay? So pulling explosively at the top, fast as you can. Pulling the shoulders at the top, squeezing isometrically, keeping everything tight, glutes, lower back. And then five seconds, lower, negative, until you get to your start position and you start to feel the slack back in the band. So you explode, hold, lower slowly. Explode, hold, lower slowly, all right?
you finished, we start some basics. So. Okay, so what you ideally need to do is you need to have a couple of anchor points. So you are going to be pulling from the floor upward. This would be a vertical pull. You're also going to work exercises such as shrugs and upright or high pulls. It's a pull on a vertical line. You will also be working a pull on a horizontal line or this way. Okay. In addition to that, you'll be working a press this way. Today's is just a chest press. You will also work on a vertical plane, potentially off the knees or uh, off the floor from a standard position. Right. But you need to work out the resistance. Right. So minimum reps would be five. And if you can get it easy, you could easily get seven, eight, nine, or ten. Do what you're going to do for those. Uh, do what you can for those repetitions. When that band, let's say you set this band up. Let's say you use a set up a thick band, thick as one you got for your deadlifts, and you find that the five was easy. And in the format I showed, well then you'd add an extra band, or you you go to a thicker band. If you found it was too much, you do what you can do, and you'd work up to five. Ideally, you want your station set up. So you want thick band ready on the floor for the deadlift. Next band that you're going to use for a pull down, ready in position for a, a pull down. So here, I'm just making an anchor point. Yeah. You can improvise this guy out of the woods, put it over the branch of a tree, whatever. Yeah. Here now, you're going to take a kneeling position, sat down flat, so my arms are extended. First motion, I'm just going to pull like I'm clinching. I'm going to hold isometrically. One, two, three, four, five, and then slowly release for five. As soon as I get full extension, pull again. Isometric, slow, eccentric. So the concentric contraction, the positive part is explosive. Pull as fast as you can. You're going to hold isometrically, two, three, four, five, and then lower eccentrically, slowly for five. Okay. Explode, <laughs> hold, lower slowly. And again, <laughs> pull, hold, make sure the thumbs are touching the chest, lower slowly for extension. Last one, <laughs> pull, hold. Slowly. So ideally what you're looking for is a resistance that makes it difficult. So in this particular sequence, right, you're going to be looking at the pull first. Right? So you are going to do deadlift, shrug, low negative, slow negative. Horizontal pull, hold, slow negative. And the last one we're going to do is upright row or high pull holding at the top, slow negative. So we're pulling on a vertical and a horizontal plane. This would be A. And you would go A1, A2, A3. Rest, right? From there, you would repeat the cycle. A1, A2, A3, rest. Each exercise is done back to back. So go straight from one to the other to the other. That's why you want them set up. By the time you get to the third cycle, which is your last set, ideally you want to be using a resistance that stops you at the set range, and that is five reps. But if you feel that you can go beyond, make your last set your hardest set, and the previous two cycles just preliminary to get to that, then if you got to five and it was easy, go until just shy of failure. You do not want to hit... Um, uh, anabolic threshold where you just used all your energy allow one or two to stay in the tank but if five is easy then bang out seven or eight 
and now you know next time you need more resistance, right? So here, I'll cut it up, just put a couple of bands together. I'm gonna stand on them so that I keep my anchor point here. I might allow some slack to accumulate between my legs because these bands are a little bit long, but they'll be too strong to double up. And now as I'm stood on here, they ain't going anywhere. I've got a range of motion to pull to my chin. Like an upright row. I'm gonna explode this up as fast as I can. And I'm gonna hold it at the top for five seconds and I'm gonna lower for five seconds. So I'm gonna go Shrug, holding at the top, lowering the shrug, slow negative to the floor, repeat, five to seven, and I'm going off my knees, horizontal pull, here, into the chest like I'm pulling the neck, the clinch, here, holding isometrically, and lowering negatively for slow, so again, five to seven reps, you would go from A1, A2 to A3, rest, 30 seconds, get a drink, one minute, whatever else, make sure you recovered, hit it again. 30 seconds, one minute rest, repeat, hit it one last time. So now, you should have the feedback to how much resistance you need. Is it too heavy, is it too light, how can I adjust, etc. Right? So you're gonna start, pull, plane, using these movements. Well, so what we've done is we pretty much switched on the fibers for starting strength. All right? So once you've finished your three cycles, you've moved straight to your next cycle of exercises, which is now B. And you'll have, for this one, you'll have three movements, right? So set them up. So we're going to have a thicker band now for my vertical pull. Horizontal pull. Uh, and I'm going to add essentially the same for my upward pull. So, what I'm doing is here I'm going to work instead of an upright row, I'm working an explosive high pull. Now, these movements can be replicated with a kettlebell, a dumbbell, or a barbell. The bands offer you constant resistance and uh, resistance throughout the entire power curve. That's why they work really well for this. Uh, so as an example, this band, I'm going to take this here and I'm going to stand on it so that there's tension just above my knees. Right? If it's slack here, then there's, not, there's, there's going to be no resistance on and off. And it's from here, nice and wide in the grip, I'm just going to explode up. I'm pulling up, using my whole posterior chain. Up on my toes, accelerating for a, for a clean, power clean, high pull snatch. So I've done that, shake it out. And I'm going to go to my, like I say, got this set up, you can go from one to the other. Resistance for my bands here, I'm on my knees. From here I'm going to explosively pull. <laughs> Seven reps. 
I'm going to finish this sequence. Make ball slams. Ball fine. Up. Slam it. Five to seven reps. Now I'm working that plyometric part. So for your strength training, I'd say you want two to three sessions a week, depending on how much you're doing. Short and sharp is better. If you can hammer it out in 20 minutes, get it done and get gone and do that. Less is more. So start every session class specific. I want you to start with um, a warm up that will put blood to your muscles, oxygen to your brain. But give you time specific. So when you start working the emotional content straight away. So you would work uh, maybe a two minute round of shadow fight. So imagine where you are, imagine you're throwing the kind of tools that you throw, imagine you cover it all, hits in, whatever, clinch in, knee in, elbow in, throw in, whatever it is you throw. Just start nice and light, not imagining throwing bombs at whoever's in front of you. Then start imagining making a connection and then imagine you make a connection and then you pick it up so little short bouts of explosiveness so a two minute round you might be intermittent with five seconds all out because in your head you've hit him with a shot he's hurt and now you follow up quick you just the idea is just to get yourself moving yeah so warm up time specific start moving around just throwing shots using the tools that you'd employ when you feel warm now start imagining making a connection Imagine what that feels, that bone to bone contact on the chin, he's hurt, he's wobbled, he's back, and now you kick with the floor, you explode it through him, and that particular encounter's done. And shake it out and do it again. Immerse yourself mentally. That's all the warm up you need. From there, go straight to set up all your movements, do three cycles of A1, A2, A3. Take a little rest, get a drink, and go to the explosive part B1, B2, B3. And that's your strength workout for the day. I want to finish with some core, some neck work, maybe a bit of grip work as I'll show you. But keep it short and sharp. You're gonna do this workout one day. We could call this workout A, where we're working all posterior chain. Next workout, you work anterior chain. So the next one will be focused on pushing and also transverse core work and maybe some explosiveness from the legs. Okay. You can have an A sequence and a B sequence, and you'd alternate. So at the very least, you do A Tuesday, B Thursday. That's your minimum. From there, you do your cross training, your fight training, your, your conditioning, whatever else it is you do to get prepared for what you need. But if you feel you can and your recovery will allow, I would do A one day, B the next, A the following. So allowing one day in between. So example, A on Monday, B on Wednesday, back to A on Friday. Following week, start with B on Monday, A on Wednesday, B on Friday. So each time you'll, every two weeks, you're working um, two A's and one B, or two B's and one A, if that makes sense. All right, this is the first workout I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the next one to five. So the motions that we've employed in this posterior chain will allow you to uh, dominate in a clinch. So for example, if I'm in a clinch, I can get the neck, I can rag him, I can get a contour, a shape of his body, underhook, overhook, whatever else, neck, collar, clinch, whatever. As soon as I get that, I can pull dynamically. Focus will be pulling my elbows close to my torso, using my whole core to dominate the subject. So I can put him in a position where I can hit him or smash him. So pull, posterior pulling chain. Is very useful for that. Um, conversely to that anterior chain where I'm pushing or exploding, I'm exploding off my feet and striking or hitting or whatever else, is obviously more conducive to knocking motherfuckers out, which is what you want it for. Right? So the musculature required for a left cross or a palm strike in the face is the frontal anterior deltoid, the pectoralis major, and the tricep 
in order to extend the arm. So it's a multi-joint movement, but it's balanced by explosion off the foot. It's initiated by explosion off the foot as you drop weight and then pike in the core. So it's all coming from transverse core. Remember, any power in punching or striking comes from your feet through the kinetic chain. So every time you're exploding off your feet, either in squats or accelerating in deadlifts, you're working that motion to accelerate through people. So it's all task specific, as we'll see.